Once upon a time in a land far away, there was a poor old widow who lived near a forest. She had a little boy named Jack who was her only child. One day Jack said, Give me a penny, mother. Please, please. His mother gave all her pennies up until Jack had them all. At last she said, There's nothing left to buy food with. Now we must sell our cow. Jack started down the path toward town and along the way he met a strange old fellow who had a big tray full of red, pink and purple beans which he was selling. Jack thought they were so beautiful and he said, I haven't any pennies but I'll trade you for my cow. Hmm, okay, done. Jack rushed home with the beans. When his mother found out what he had done, she grabbed the beans and threw them beside the kitchen window. Silly boy, you've traded all we own for a handful of little beans. I gave you pennies every day, and this is how you repay me? I gave you all you asked, and more than I could afford. I asked you to sell the cow. And what did you do? Trade! One day you will wish you had obeyed me. Jack cried himself to sleep. <sighs> I like those beans. He woke before sunrise and found the beans had sprouted up and grown right up into the clouds. In just a little time, the beanstalk was like a giant tree. Jack decided to climb the stalk. All morning long, he climbed and climbed some more. Finally, at noon, he reached the top. As he looked around, Jack saw a castle surrounded by bones and rocks and sand. Jack rang the bell and a woman came to the door. Shh, be careful, boy, if you want to live. A mean giant lives here, and I am his wife. Here, quickly jump into this oven and hide. So Jack quickly hid in the oven, and to his relief, there wasn't any fire inside. Nearby, Jack heard the giant roar. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. She said to her giant husband, Why, Jake, there's no one here. Then bring me my magic hen. She ran into the next room and brought out an old chicken. Lay me some eggs, said the giant. To his astonishment, Jack watched as the hen laid eggs of solid gold upon the table. Amazed, Jack thought to himself, If only we had that magical hen to lay golden eggs, all of our problems would be solved and my mother would be happy again. The giant's wife left the room as the giant fell asleep. He stretched out his legs and gave the hen a little rest from laying golden eggs. Jack sneaked carefully up to the table and quickly grabbed the hen. He climbed down the stalk as fast as he possibly could. When he was back home, he excitedly told his mother, You don't have to wish we still had that old cow anymore, mother. This hen will take care of all of our problems. Jack, where did you get that hen? I found it at the top of the beanstalk. Jack did not tell his mother he had taken it from the giant because he knew she would be angry. Now one would think that having this great hen would have made Jack happy. What more could Jack need? Alas, Jack wanted more. His mother begged him to stay at home, but Jack would not obey. 
One day, he carefully disguised himself and soon went climbing back up the beanstalk. Mrs. Giant did not recognize Jack and hid him inside the kitchen pantry while her husband had his tea. Jack watched through a small hole as the giant counted two money bags full of gold over and over until he became tired and fell asleep. The wife went out of the room and this gave Jack the opportunity to quickly grab the bags of gold and run back to the top of the beanstalk. He poured out the bags and the gold fell down to his house. Jack's mother, working in the yard below, was amazed to see gold falling from the sky, but even happier to see her Jack return safely home. Look, Jack! This gold has fallen down the beanstalk. We have more money than we can ever spend now, Jack. So now you can stay at home with me, where you are safe. Once again, you'd think Jack would have been content with what he had and listened to his mother, but after a year, he decided he would climb the beanstalk again. One morning, his mother overslept, and this was the opportunity Jack had waited for. Jack put on a new disguise and started back up the beanstalk. Not knowing him, the giant's wife told Jack a long, sad story about how mean her husband was and how he had lost all of his gold. Suddenly, footsteps could be heard. It was the mean old giant. She pointed to a washtub where Jack could hide. The giant roared. Fee, five, fo, fum, I smell a boy. He began to search the room frantically. He looked around and found nothing. He looked everywhere but in the tub. Soon night fell and his wife went to bed. The giant cried. My harp. A harp came running into the room all by itself and knelt beside him. Play! Said the giant, and the harp began to play beautiful soft music. Soon the giant fell fast asleep. The magic tunes mesmerized young Jack. If only I had a harp like that, I'd never roam. I would be happy to stay at home with mother. So he grabbed the harp and ran. Just as he reached the door, the harp cried, Master, master! <laughs> the giant awoke with a start. Jack dropped the harp and ran as fast as he possibly could back towards the beanstalk. As he was running, Jack heard the giant yell. You are the thief. You took my gold and my hen. Oh, how Jack wished that he had not taken what was not his and had obeyed his poor old mother. Jack reached the stock first and started down. Jack cried. Mother, hurry, hurry, grab an axe. As soon as he reached the bottom, Jack chopped down the stalk so the giant could not climb down. It was a close escape and Jack had finally learned his lesson. Mother, it was wrong of me to take those things from the giant. I promise you, from now on, I will be content with what I have and will obey you. To show how serious he was about understanding the lessons he had learned from his close call with the giant, he wrote a poem. My story shows you that when your pennies are spent, you should not nag for more and more, but try to be content. Don't fret if things go wrong at home, don't ever run away. And when you're told to do a thing, it's safest to obey. 
Jack forever honored the ideals of his poem, and both he and his mother lived happily ever after. The End